We begin with Red Sox legend David Big Poppy Ortiz. He is safe, recovering this morning after he was shot in the back. This at a nightclub in his native Dominican Republic. Uh, we also have this new surveillance video in. It is from our affiliate, allegedly showing the moments that shots were fired. Boston and the entire Major League Baseball community collectively this morning breathing a, a sigh of relief as police confirm and his family also confirm that the baseball icon is stable after surgery. Alexander Field is with us. She's been on this story since it broke. A uh, suspect is in custody. I mean, what do we know? Do we even know at this point whether Ortiz was actually the target? Look, we know that he is a living legend. It's yeah. not clear why anyone would target David Ortiz, but that video is really stunning. It shows him in that packed restaurant. Clearly, uh, police are saying the motorcyclist went directly up to him. A shot was fired, and you see Big Poppy, this man who has been such a giant in the world of baseball, such a giant to the city of Boston, going to the ground. There are people overnight in, in Boston and really across the country and beyond that holding their breath for better news. Mm -hmm. We know that the bullet went through his back into his stomach. He was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery. His father updating reporters overnight. Here's what he said. The operation is over and he is stable. We're just waiting for the doctors to take him out of the surgery room. He's resting right now. No, there are no other damages we know of. He is stable. Several people suspected to be connected to the shooting have been taken into custody. One of them was actually taken to a hospital to be treated for injuries suffered after he was attacked by the group of bystanders that witnessed that really terrifying moment, Poppy. A completely terrifying moment, and we don't know anything else at this point about the suspect, do we? We we really don't, and we don't know what could have motivated this. We know that police are waiting to speak to David Ortiz. That, of course, sure. will depend on when he's able to do those interviews. Uh, but this is really a person whose impact you cannot... Uh, understate. This is somebody who has been so important, not just for his record in baseball, not just for his triumphs in mm -hmm. baseball, but somebody who really helped to bring the city of Boston together after those difficult days of the Boston Marathon yeah. bombing. You know, the sports teams in the city of Boston have this really uncanny way of pulling people together. Yeah. There were so many people overnight tweeting, putting out statements, really uh, pulling together and showing their support right. for Big Poppy. Do you remember he said in those, in those days after the bombing, like, our jerseys say Boston. Right, they don't say Red they Sox, say they Red say Sox. Boston. We are the city and we stand for the city. Alex, thank you for the reporting. We appreciate it. Jim. With us now to talk more about this CNN sports analyst, sports columnist for USA Today, Christine Brennan. Christine, always good to have you on. Just sad that this is the topic today. Poppy, big Poppy, he, he's such a beloved figure in baseball, in sports, in Boston. Uh, tell us about the reaction in the sports community today. Oh, it's, it's been intense from the moment, uh, Jim, that the news hit last night and the concern over would he be okay. Uh, obviously, David Ortiz is synonymous with the Boston Red Sox and with the resurgence of the Red Sox. There was a time kids grew up in Boston and never saw a Boston team win any title at all. Well, that changed, and Big Poppy was a big part of that. Three World Series titles, 10 All-Star appearances. He was the MVP of the uh, World Series in 2013, the same year as the Boston Marathon and his infamous speech when he got out there and, and talked about the city and what it meant to him. So uh, he is much more than just an athlete. He is really part of the culture in Boston and throughout Major League Baseball. And I think that was that's why there is such great concern, even though he's retired, retired in 2016. He's 43 years old now. But um, such a presence uh, throughout the baseball community and, and throughout uh, Boston and, and New England. Of course, you know, he's so well known as you bring up Christine 2004, helping end, helping the Sox end the, you know, the so-called curse of the Bambino. But but so far beyond that, right, he's so much bigger than his skill was for that team specifically. Back in the day, he did play for the Minnesota Twins. I would just I would just note that long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, let me let me ask you about just how unprecedented this is. I mean, if he was indeed Christine, the target, you know, it's one thing for professional athletes to be heckled. If he was the intended target for this, it's rather unprecedented. It is. Uh, more and more players are coming from the Dominican or Venezuela, other, other nations that are known, um, certainly have their share, sadly, of poverty. And when they go home, uh, many of them are very aware of this, and uh, some even have extra security 
or are very aware of their homes being secure. Um, I, it's a generalization. Nonetheless, it's an issue for, for athletes. And a few years ago, in 2011, a Washington Nationals player, Wilson Ramos, was actually kidnapped for two days in Venezuela, thankfully released. Again, a happy ending to a story, Poppy. But mm -hmm. that was an example of a story where a, a star went back home and then yeah. had a, a crime committed against him. So this is something I think we'll be hearing more about the next few days, this particular issue of athletes and their safety when they go home and when they are, could possibly be targets and when people know who they are. Christine, is there any evidence at this point as to why he was mm. targeted and, and so brazenly, right? I mean, in the middle of a crowd, right? Yeah, Jim, well, when we don't know if in fact he was targeted, but it certainly, because of the Wilson Ramos story in 2011, and because uh, athletes, my goodness, it's happened in the NFL as well, and and you hear a lot about athletes who have their friends and, and hangers on who want to be around them. I mean, that's a natural thing. It can be just, as you mentioned, it can be just uh, fans who want to be around someone, and it can be people with more nefarious uh, uh, situations and maybe more ideas to do worse things. We don't yet know about this. I, my sense is we'll find out. But my sense is also today that there are athletes around the world who are very aware of their security. And even looking at it, we go back to Monica Seles and the stabbing and a tennis match in the 1990s and Nancy right. Kerrigan, uh, obviously, and figure yeah. skating. These things do happen every now and then, and they are a wake-up call, I think, for the entire athletic community to be more aware of their security.